think very good point. Thank you, Fiona. I'm glad there's a professional on board. Um, <laughs> thank you very much. Um, God, a, <laughs> so many times I've done that and just went. Can, can we just start again? <laughs> So if you didn't join us for the first one, or if you didn't see the first um, webinar, please, 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 please go and have a look at it. It is, uh, it is, it is amazing. And um, you might uh, be playing catch up actually um, on this one, because we're gonna get straight in, and we're gonna be doing some coaching on this one, but we're gonna also be uh, addressing a lot of the questions that have come in already from you guys. And there's some absolutely brilliant questions here. But firstly, quickly, very, very quickly, we're just gonna do a quick introduction. Um, uh, for anyone that is completely new. Uh, Fiona, just, just want to introduce yourself quickly. Hi everyone, great to see some familiar faces and some new faces. Hi. So my degree is in psychology and I was an assistant psychologist and I decided to leave that and do my own work because I work very much with intuition and energy and I, lo I love coaching because coaching's about bringing people's wisdom out of them and reading the energy just enables me to get to the part of their wisdom and ask them questions about it that they need to get to. And I teach you how to clear your energy. And sometimes if needed, I do that for you. But my aim is to empower you to do it for yourself. So that's me in a nutshell, I think. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Um, and just a quick introduction to anyone that doesn't know me. Um, I, uh, came across three principles in 2011 and um, it helped me to understand my own um, my own torment my own mental torment that I was uh, uh, creating a, a prison of my own making through my thinking uh, and it gave me the the uh, the understanding to realize I didn't have to believe my thinking that's it in a nutshell I uh, wrote a book called Do Nothing, um, have written books since and I'm actually writing a, a simple introduction to the three principles as we speak not literally now, um, <laughs> although in my mind I probably am a bit. Um, and, uh, and and I'm a coach, and I take this out into businesses. And uh, and since coming across Fiona and and um, being pointed in this direction, working with energy, it's been really enlightening to me. Um, I always start from the starting point of that I don't really know that much, uh, and I'm willing to 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 learn more. And so, you know, working with energy, understanding about energy is, is, is I think, amazing. And it's just really opened my mind up as well to how this universe is kind of put together. And we're starting to get a real sense of that through, our, uh, uh, the, uh, through science, actually, um, and curiosity. And, um, and so, yeah, that, that's me in a nutshell. Right, let's get straight in there and let's start addressing some of these amazing questions because there's been some really, really good ones sent in today. Uh, that we're going to do with today. So um, I'm going to start with this one because um, I think it's a, 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 a really good one to to start with for anyone that, that obviously knows the principles. So is it, how does energy work fit in with the inside out understanding? So let's, let's get let's let's go straight in there in the deep end. Fiona, do you want to kick off? You want me to answer that one? Go on then. Yeah. So as as I said in the introduction. The, the principles are absolutely great. And I, I came across them um, about 14 months ago now. And they just brought together, for me, they brought together, you know, psychology with the understanding of spirituality and energy. And I was just like very blown away by that. So when, when you really see that the principles are the truth in your life, that just opens up your life and you see a whole new way of being in life and enjoying life and seeing it. But if it's unconscious, you might not have the awareness there to actually have the insight into it. So working with energy brings the unconscious to your conscious mind. It enables you to see and work with things that you're just doing on automatic pilot. So bringing in the energy aspect of it, it's like bringing in the unconscious mind and bringing in your imagination. And, you know, energy, I think, is a structure that holds everything else. Everything's made of energy. So when we work with the energy, the structure just falls. So then you're clear and you're open to see things in a whole new way. And as you can tell, I'm very excited about that. 
<laughs> Brilliant. Thank you very much. Uh, right, let's go in with this one here, which is from Theo Tomlinson. He said, since uh, the understanding the three principles, uh, he'd given up uh, Qigong and meditation. Um, and I want to renew my practice, but don't want to beat myself up with, uh, with old thinking. Okay, I'm, I'm going to tackle that one because um, I, I did Tai Chi for eight years and um, uh, I was actually doing some work with, some, with the chakras yesterday and, and had some, you know, I was, I was really feeling the energy in, in, my, um, uh, in, my, in my chakras, in my third chakra. And I had a real insight with, uh, with, with that, but just by listening, by deep listening. And to me, there is, there's no, there's no reason to, to beat yourself up by, by yeah, which there's often talked about, you know, the purity of the principles. The principles is just the description of how the system works, right? That's all it is. Right? Sid, Sid used some words that describe there is this energy of everything called mind, and we create our experience through our thinking, brought to life through our consciousness. That's it. It's just describing how our experience is manifested, right? Beyond that, there is so much we don't know, so much we, we don't yet understand. And for centuries, for, you know, for hundreds of thousands of years, there's been energy workers that, that have understood, that have kind of tapped into that field and tapped into that consciousness and have been pointing us in that direction. And Sid was the first to say, he said, this isn't new. What we're talking about isn't new. What Sid, the, the, the gift that Sid gave us is a way to describe it that basically every person can understand, in my mind. That's the way I see it. And when we overcomplicate it, I think we're, we're, we're in danger of putting people off because it's really simple. We're just describing how the process works. You know, we have this energy that comes through us. We think we experience that through consciousness. And then everything else is up for grabs. So, yeah, why wouldn't you meditate? Why wouldn't you work with you know, Qigong? Why wouldn't you do mindfulness? Why wouldn't you go out for a run? You know, why wouldn't you do that? It's not, it's not about that. It's not about being pure or just only, you know, just because just you, you've seen a way to describe what's true in, in, with using words that people can understand. What's the purity in that? It's like words are metaphors anyway. <laughs> Did you see the post I put on Facebook? Words are metaphors, literally. <laughs> they are. So that, that's how I, yeah, don't, don't, you know, you, you getting lost in your own thinking is just the process. Yeah. So get on, enjoy yourself, enjoy your life. That's what Sid said. He said, just you know, throw the tape out the window and enjoy your life. I 100% agree with that. Fiona, do you want to add to that? No, I think that was beautifully said. You know, <laughs> to me, the principles are, they're, they're the truth and they're about living. So live your life. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. Love that. Thank you very much. Right, we're going to do, uh, let's, let's do one more question and then we'll, we'll start tackling some of the, uh, the energy um, uh, blocking. How does grounding oneself get, to, get one to be more present? This is from Jennifer. Is Jennifer here? Jennifer here? Can't see Jennifer. No. No, I can't see her. How does grounding oneself get one to be more present? Um, Fiona, do you want to go for that one? Yeah, so... You know, grounding has got some bad publicity, in my opinion, because they've made it into a science where they're trying to sell you things like grounding mats and earthing mats and, you know, and uh, sorry if I rolled my eyes there, but I just think they're just trying to make money, you know, because we are naturally connected to the earth because biomechanics is a scientific study of how the body moves it talks about gravity and it talks about uh, the magnetization of, of the earth. And you, you wouldn't be able to propel your body forward if you wasn't, when you walked on the earth, there wasn't a force that was propelling you forward. That's biomechanics. So we're always connected to the earth because if we wasn't, we'd float away. You know, it's not just gravity that holds us down. It's the magnetic earth that we're connected to because we have that same in us that we're connected to it. So grounding, it's simply just allowing yourself to become conscious of what is already happening, conscious of being in your body, being connected to the earth, allowing your energy, which does all the time, you know, life force, mind, whatever you want to call it, leave your body, 
go into the ground, energy, life force, mind comes from the ground into your body. That is already happening. And becoming consciously aware of that brings you straight into the present moment because you're being conscious and you're being aware, but also you're being in your own body. And that's connecting you to everything that you are rather than just being stuck in your head. Or a lot of people now are actually out here. They're not even stuck in the head anymore. They're slightly <laughs> dissociated. Um, and that's, that's what I specialize in. Yeah. So is, like that is that clear to everyone? I just want to kind of add to that. I, th I think, you know, you said it brilliantly. Um, we are always present, but for our thinking that we're not. Um, I, I use the example of um, there was a, a beautiful story of, of a, a, a POW in the Second World War um, who, was, who was found at the end of the war and they thought he was a collaborator. Uh, Wild Bill Cody, has anyone heard the story of Wild Bill Cody? Uh, if you come to Viva event in Spain, I'll, I'll probably read, read the story out because there's, there's a beautiful passage um, that, that describes him. And, and he was essentially enlightened, you know, uh, but his experience that the moment where he saw what hatred could do was in the moment where he saw his uh, wife and children being shot by the Gestapo. And as their bodies hit the floor, he, he had an enlightened moment where he, he realized that hatred could do this and he chose never to hate again. So, you know, we talk about grounding as if it's something you have to go and do. You know, it's it's that that pure consciousness is is available to us in any given moment, and we don't have to be standing on the grass with bare feet or you know sitting in lotus position to get it. it it's available to us, but for our thinking in the moment that takes us out of it. So um, yeah, we're always connected, um, but our, our personal thinking just takes us. You know, as you said, it's like you know you see people that are so far off in la la land. <laughs> Okay, uh, right. Let's do some let's 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 do some energy shifting here because um, uh, I know this is what we promised to do. This is why we're doing the second call. So, um, the question was, what would you like help with from Fiona with regard to energy shifting? And uh, we've actually got Jackie, Jackie Watson. Where are you, Jackie? Ah, hi, Jackie. Are you uh, you have are you okay for me to? Um, oh, to, to talk about relationship blocks. Shall I unmute you for a second? Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, can you hear me? Yeah, are you, are you okay to, to have some coaching? Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna put you on speak of you and I'm gonna mute myself. I'm gonna hand you over to Fiona and we, we can, um, I'll leave you in her capable hands. Go for okay, it. Okay, thank you. Okay, just for transparency, I have actually had a conversation with Jackie. So just so everybody knows that. But what would you like to, uh, what would you like to ask? What, yeah, what would you like to say, Jackie? I don't know. I didn't realise I would be doing this right now. I was uh, just sort of going to be willing to listen to others, first of all. Um, you don't have to if you don't, don't want to. Know. If you don't want to, we can, we can go to someone else if you want. Uh, yeah, trying to come back to me. If, yeah, okay, we'll do that. No. We don't want to put anyone under any pressure if they want to, so yeah, that's fine. Okay, okay who would actually like a, a session with Fiona? Uh, just put your hand up. Obviously, the three people down, down the bottom, I can't see you, so that's going to be a bit hard. So, Anne Marie. But they can raise their hand in the chat. Oh, they can. Well done. I'm glad there's a professional on board. Uh, <laughs> Pat, uh, Terry, Anne Marie, anyone? I'm not scary. I'm actually quite a nice person. <laughs> Lucia, Maria, anyone? Okay, well, we're just going to have to carry on until someone gets enough courage to want their energy shifting. Pat, Pat's on the verge of it, I can tell. <laughs> I'm actually working with Pat at the moment, and she's a brilliant energy worker herself it's been oh, okay. remarkable that's awesome yeah. 
and I'm really that's enjoying That's why it. I didn't, um, yeah, I, that's why I didn't offer myself because I thought someone else might, because since your last one, I phoned Fiona and we've been working together, so that's why I didn't want to cut him. Okay, and I've just seen... Do you want to seen... say a little bit? Go on, yeah. Do, do you want to say a little bit about it, Pat, that, it, that it's not as scary as what people may think it is? Oh. Oh, wow. Now you've put me on the spot. Um, oh, wow. I mean, I've had two sessions with uh, Fiona and I can honestly say with hand on heart, I'm quite astounded how I was very confused with the three principles and energy work. Maybe this might bring us in a bit first. I was confused with that because when I first learned about the principles, a bit like what the man said to you, Damien. Um, I then threw out everything about meditation because I took it as the principles were that and I didn't need anything else or structures and whatever, whatever. Mm. Um, but I found that it didn't work like that, that it actually was just, is it prescriptive or just one of the, you know, it just told us how our system worked and I was still having lots of challenges yeah. anyway. So when I see your last um, video come up, I, I'd never heard of anyone talking about energy. And I'd been getting feelings again. I used to do healing years ago, but I'd been getting thoughts about it. Anyway, to cut a long straw, I was very intrigued to watch your last episode. And I just felt that connection. I thought, this is what I want to know. I want to know some stuff about the principles and energy. You know, like, because if if thought passes through us, then why would we need energy work? Do I believe it gets stuck in the body now? So I got quite heady and confused. So I actually had a chat with Fiona. So I've had two sessions. I'm actually... She is wonderful, she's lovely, she's gentle, she's funny, and there is a wonderful rapport, and I do feel I'm in the right place, so that, that helps for me. I'm just quite astounded at the shift in the energy with me that has brought awareness after I've had a session, it, it has brought like a conscious and awareness to some of the habits and the things that were actually had me stuck that I didn't know because what I was doing, I've had quite bad health. I was so caught up here with the thinking of it all. I was so overwhelmed. I was making myself ill. Yeah, so that's, sorry. That, that's great, Pam. I'm just aware of the time. But I'm oh, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. So tell much. you. Oh, quickly, sorry. Yeah. So, um, so I've had two sessions and I've been amazed at how also, like Fiona said, how it helps you. Uh, she's... I am actually doing energy work with myself and stuff that I didn't even know was there. So mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I don't know if I've even answered what the question was. No, yeah, great. You, 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 you do, you, I don't know if anyone saw my call with Amir the other day, um, but it does remind me there's, um, uh, there was one of the, um, does anyone here listen to the, the Dave Asprey Bulletproof Radio podcast? No? It's very worthwhile checking out because this is a guy that is doing, uh, he, he interviews some people that are doing some pretty amazing stuff. Oh, Maria has to go. Okay, make sure you check the, um, uh, the recording, Maria. Um, he does, he's, he's doing some work with some, with some people that, you know, they're doing stuff with uh, hormones, they're doing stuff with genetics, they're doing stuff with, with just, incredible, just incredible work that's going on. Um, uh, how to power mitochondria, all sorts of stuff. And there was one guy in particular that he spoke to that was, um, that was talking about people that have been in PTSD situations where, like for instance, war zones, where they've essentially been on alert constantly and their body has, has locked into an energetic uh, reaction. And what they actually do is they go in and they, they can do CAT scans of their nerves, nerve ends and they can actually see them stuck in like, you can imagine like an on off uh, switch. They're stuck in, 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 in fright, um, in fight mode. So what they do is they go in and they actually uh, uh, put an electric uh, pulse through the nerve end, shock it out, and it releases the energy. Now, this is, this is science showing that actually, that, you know, we are stuck in this particular kind of way and, and how to actually take us out of it. So, you know, this, this isn't, 
I think maybe what you know 20 30 years ago you could sort of look at energy healers and, and like go oh it's a bit woo-woo now we just go well there's science behind it that shows how it works it's not woo-woo at all you know we've got this energetic field that goes out you know meters in front of us and they've shown it they haven't actually got the right equipment to actually you know measure how far it goes so um it's it's about working with that you know and as i say the principles are just a description of how we how we how we create our experience what i've also found is with some people that they've had an insight through understanding the principles that's just changed everything for them now for me that's not the case because sometimes i get lost in my thinking sometimes i forget yeah so that's why i always say it's just a description of the process it's not going to tell me how to live a better life it's going to, I'm going to rem remember how the system works when I do, and I'm going to forget when I don't, but that's part of being human. So working with energy, why wouldn't you do that? You know, meditating, why wouldn't you do that? Because you're just settling the mind, you know, going out and doing exercise, why wouldn't you do that? Um, and so we're just kind of like touching a tip of the iceberg here. And, and Fiona's just one of those people that, you know, because you are just so attuned to doing this for all of your life, because that's what you just read people's energies, that's what you do. It just makes sense to then, you know, work with that. You know, whereas other people, you know, some people are great at getting up on stage and speaking. Some people are great at writing. Some people are great at mechanics. Some, it's like you, you're just doing what you're, what you're, you know, good at and aligned to do. Um, right. Let's just uh, let's address a couple of the the blocks and see, and see uh, maybe how we can talk around those. So, um, uh, Lisa Valentine said um, she'd like Fiona to to help energy shifting with regard to sleep anxiety, sleep anxiety and insomnia. I guess that's anxiety and sleep and insomnia. So do you want to just let us know how, how you would, or, or first of all, how you see that? And then what do you do with that? Yeah, so most of the time sleep disorders are because people are stuck in their head. They're stuck in their head with their thoughts. You know, they just, for whatever reason, they can't let a thought go. They, they can't literally put it down and leave it or say to themselves, you know, it's thoughts, it's not personal, it doesn't need to be solved right now. You know how a thought goes by and then you grab hold of it and you have lots of thinking about it. It's that lots of thinking that's generally causing people to have sleep disorders. So I was working with a lady yesterday and, it, and she said, oh, I, I have a sleep disorder, I've never told you about that anymore. And I said, oh, okay. I said, well, before you go to bed tonight, I want you to do three exercises. And I sent them to her on PDF. One was grounding and the first one was um, magnet in the lake, clearing her energy field, clearing her energy of everything that's not hers, just letting it all go because we all exchange energy all the time and I, I can go into that in more depth another time. And um, then ground yourself, get in your body, get present and then, you know, set, set your energy field and set an intention. I'm going to sleep well tonight. I'm going to let go of the thoughts. Anything I need to know I can deal with tomorrow. Now it's time to sleep. She wrote me an email this morning saying, I've just got up late. I missed my first meeting. I slept so well. <laughs> she didn't Brilliant. hear her alarm. That's a true story. Love you know, that. I couldn't make that one up even if I tried. I love that. That's great. So being present, you're just getting out of your head. You're getting in your body. And Sid Banks, he talked about mind is energy. Of course it is. You know, mm -hmm. mind, energy, life force, God. They're all the same thing. When we're out of our personal thinking, then we see beyond that and what's beyond that mind. And that's all we're doing with the energy work or the alignment, as Damien often puts it. Something that I do when, whenever I uh, wake up, I wake up the other morning just literally so wide awake at like half five in the morning, just like completely awake. <laughs> and, and I just kind of ask myself, it's like, why? Why have I just done that? And, and, and then I ended up drawing a diagram, which is going in the book and I'm not going to share it with you now, but it's actually like a really, it's like a diagram version of the principles. <laughs> it's really clear. Okay. I was like, Oh, okay. Thank you very much. And then of course I was awake. So something that I've, that I've done, which I've come across, which has really, really helped me. And again, I don't understand. Maybe you can, you know, tell me why this works. Fiona is uh, Ho'oponopono. Uh, I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. And, and if ever I get stuck in my thinking when I'm you know, awake and I should be asleep, I just say that over and over and over again. And I just go off. Very difficult not to say that, you know, 20 or 30 times and just fall asleep. <laughs> and I guess there's, so, I can, can you tell me how Ho'oponopono works? 
I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I don't even have to say it in the right order, but I guess it doesn't matter. Yeah. To me, it's, it's about, it's about going inside. It's about going inside. It's about bringing our attention inside of us. Like the Honopono is from what I remember because I looked at it when I was in Canada, which was like 10 years ago. It, it was a, a spiritual thing. And if I'm correct in saying they don't have a word for I. Most indigenous cultures don't have a word for I. And why? Because they don't believe in the individual self. They believe in structures, communities, you know, togetherness. They, they know that they're, they're oneness. They don't believe in separation. So when they say, I forgive you, I love you, they're talking to themselves and they're talking to everyone else at the same time. And that goes in on a deep cellular level and turns off all of those on switches that you were talking about earlier. It mm. just resets the system, calls it down, calms it down, brings it back to neutral. Mm, love it. And if anyone finds out any different, please send me it because it was 10 years ago I looked at that. <laughs> <laughs> So just on that one, so, so, um, who wrote this one? Oh, Judy, Judy Nike in, in uh, New Zealand. She said, can, can you recommend processes we can do ourselves? Well, there's one, Ho'oponopono. Yeah, I really, I'm, I truly believe in grounding, you know, just getting in touch with your body, getting in touch with the earth. And if you sign into my website, you get the grounding exercise on audio for free. The grounding is one for me that I think is amazing. And there's, you know, there's other, like the, the, the ones I've just mentioned, the lake and the magnet set in your energy field. All of these things, um, the magnet in the lake, <laughs> all of these things you can do, you can do yourself. You know, you can work with your chakras as Damien was saying. So there's so much energy work that you can do yourself. Mm. Um, um, Maria left, but she, she was talking about uh, she needed clarity about a decision. How would you get someone to help with that, with the energy work? Okay. Um, yeah, it's probably not appropriate to read her energy since she's not here, is it? No, true. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so, sorry, ask me the question again. I went into energy world. <laughs> <laughs> How would you help someone to get clarity about a decision? Okay. You know, I, I have this personal belief that we all know exactly what we want. The problem is we're not asking ourselves that question. We're often not asking ourselves what do we want. The question we're asking ourselves is how do I deal with these limitations that I think are happening at the moment? So an example of that would be a really silly example, but from my own life, so hands up, you know, um, I was, I was really debating whether I take my dog on retreat or not. And I was debating it because at the time I didn't have, I didn't think I had the money to pay the, uh, the dog hotel. And um, when I asked myself what I really, really wanted, it was just obviously clear. I wanted to go on retreat by myself. My dog was a puppy and it wasn't about the money. It was because I felt guilty leaving her with somebody else but as soon as I got clear on what I wanted it just brought and when I say clear when I asked myself what do I want I instantly had the answer and I truly 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 believe we all know what we want if we just take the time to ground be in our bodies be in alignment be in nature whatever does that for you and ask yourself purely what do I want and be open to the answer rather than scared of it. Mm, I love that. Thank you. Um, I've just noticed, Kirsty, you, you came on uh, a little bit a, a little bit later. You, you've got a question here. Um, I'd like to know, but I'd like to better understand how my energy affects my physical body. I'd like to know how my energy affects my physical body. Do you, do you want to expand on that, or are you okay for it? Ah, do you mean I've got to speak? I'm, I, I'm trying to remember what I was thinking of when I said it. Oh. <laughs> um, could you tilt your screen down so we could actually see you? Because we can see your eyes right now. Um, <laughs> I was thinking about... 
I suppose I was thinking about that you have obviously energy in your body um, and, um, Hopefully. and that, that, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm banking that that's a good idea as well. Um, <laughs> uh, um, I don't know. I suppose I was thinking about, I mean, obviously you get physical feelings and, and things that are all tapped in and related to your energy. I don't know. I think I just wanted to know a bit more about it. You know, maybe I was thinking a bit about injuries and, things that hurt and things I know the I I get I get um a really sore shoulder for example when I've uh, been overthinking um and I'm thinking what that there are there are maybe you know where you've got a physical block that um energy tends to go there for some reason and cause you pain I don't know I'd like to know a bit more about what you think about those kind of things I guess Mm. that was 15 questions in one (laughs) Do you want to go ahead, Damien? Or? No, I'm going to leave it to the expert. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is it possible to see a bit more of you, Kirsty? Just. I'd yeah, just love to see a bit more of you. I yeah. literally run indoors from mucking out horses. I'm absolutely. That's okay. You look beautiful. Um, yes, yeah, sure. <laughs> That's why I want to see you. Okay. So, my, my sense is that when. When you're under tension, you do that. I do. I know I do. That's why you have a pain in your shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> that might sound really simplistic and silly, but it, it's totally true. You know, everybody has a way of contracting their body because when we're under tension, the body contracts internally anyway. But 99% of the people, probably 99.9% of the people, then create another physical contraction because energy works in polar opposites. So if something's contracting inside, something will contract so-called outside and you'll you'll literally see it. And, And that's, again, that's science. When we have tension, the cells contract, they create swelling and then they expand again. And all diseases are because of stress and stress causes inflammation. So in 100% of diseases, the main cause is inflammation. And Bruce Lipton says, who's a hero of mine, he he says that 90% of the world's diseases will be eradicated if we eradicate stress. Mm. That is huge. Everyone else has said it the other way around. But Bruce was the first guy to say, no, we eradicate stress we are eradicating diseases because the stress is gone and that's what's causing them. But, it, but he's talking about a cellular level because he's the founder of epigenetics. I suppose then you sort of get to the question there. It's like, well, yeah, I can really see how those two things correlate, how when you're stressed that it does cause an inflammatory reaction in your body. Totally can see that but you would always sort of draw you to the the next question which would be okay so I can see that I'm doing that to myself (laughs) Um, so then you know how do I not do it and I and I think you know because you obviously said oh I can see that you scratch your shoulder I'm like I totally know I do that because probably about 10 times a day I'm like oh yeah the shoulder and I like sort of you know you sort of try and sort of relax your shoulders down and stuff but I mean, that's a physical thing. I mean, you're talking about kind of getting out of your head, aren't you? And, and, and back into your body. And it, and it is kind of like that. I is guess. it more your left shoulder than your right shoulder? No, it's my right. But <laughs> Okay. Because you actually, so is it okay to read your energy? Uh, okay. <laughs> Because it, it looks like at some point you injured your, your left shoulder. I'm dyslexic, by the way. So this side of you, your left shoulder. And, um, and it, there's tension that, that goes up the elevated scapular muscle. So do, do you also sometimes get headaches? Yeah. And I, I, headaches I, are lower down in your head or <laughs> here. Is that yeah. correct? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that's from an old injury that... But actually, it's not that old because you've redone it two years ago. Um, and that's causing a contraction in the left side anyway. And the body likes to kind of be symmetrical. And, and you obviously ride and work horses. 
So if you've got a contraction this side, then the, the horse is going to feel that and the horse is going to respond to it. So you're probably trying to naturally compensate by doing that as well. So you can, you can clear that by seeing an osteopath, you can clear that by grounding, you can clear that by using magnets, you know, you can clear it energetically or you can clear it physically, you can clear it emotionally, you can clear it mentally, but the best way is to clear it on all levels. And to do that, you need to work with Damon or, not, or I. Yeah, it's, it's funny um, because um, you say see an osteopath. I have seen an osteopath about <laughs> and various other people. Um, but it's kind of interesting because I, got, I started to get a little bit curious about what you were saying after the last time I saw... Um, He's, this guy's not an osteopath but he'd been releasing various different compensations and I'd asked a question on the last call about the fact that you get quite an emotional release sometimes um, that really took me by surprise <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and I'm a bit suspicious that the neck injury because it the first time I injured it was quite traumatic um, that I'm thinking maybe I'm a bit scared about having somebody release that because it's sort of no, if, if you don't, I'm hanging on to a little bit, maybe. I think what you're scared of, and uh, I, I, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna close my eyes just because I, I want to say it and then gauge your reaction. I don't, you know, want feedback from you before I finish saying it. So I think, okay, you want me to look at you. So where are you? You're there. Okay. So what what's happening, Kirsty? Is your you're scared of going back into the trauma and that makes total logical sense and if he's not a gentle osteopath there's a chance of that because it's quite it's quite quick isn't it i'm a cranial sacral therapist so which derived of osteopathy so i don't work that way so what your body needs is it it needs a gentle realignment which can be done physically for seeing a cranial sacral therapist, for example, or it can be done energetically on all levels of your being by seeing somebody like Damien and I. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, it does. It, it's just something where you just sort of start to get a bit curious about it, I guess. You know, having had, I've had my neck realigned a few times now, and it's a bit like, and it keeps ending up back where you started and then you think well there's a lot of muscular things going on so you need to look at them and then I'm thinking yeah there's it's, something else going but your on. hips are also yeah. out of alignment and so are two of your vertebrae yeah and the trouble is a lot of osteopaths they're not looking at the body as a whole system they're like oh here's the pain oh yeah something's out of alignment I can do that click you're yeah. done that's rubbish you're, sorry if anyone's an osteopath <laughs> but your, your body's a whole system so What's rubbish is the thinking, not osteopathy, just to be clear. So your body's a whole system and you have to work with the whole system. You can't just put, you know, one part of the puzzle back together, one part of the body back in alignment and expect everything else to, to just suddenly go back into alignment. It, it all needs to be helped together. And I think that's called classical osteopathy. And it's definitely the osteopathy they practice in Indian, India because I, I've recently seen an Indian um, osteopath and he was amazing. Yeah. But yes, that is so fascinating though, the whole thing. And it does really make you wonder and, um, about, you know, how you keep, ch I suppose, almost chasing things around, don't you? Where it's like... Yeah, but the secret to you, Kirsty, is removing the trauma from your body that's stuck there. And then the body will just ease itself. Mm. Yeah, and, that, and that's kind of like, I never even, I didn't believe that that was possible, I suppose, until um, the last time that I was treated. And uh, he'd released off some muscles in my lower leg and, and he'd asked me about it. And I couldn't be sure that it wasn't just that he'd asked me about how I'd injured it because it, I'd been kicked quite badly um when I was out at a competition but um the, and it was like there was a lot of things around that where the woman was 
really abusive to me, even though it was completely her fault, <laughs> and her friends. Um, instead of wondering whether I had, in fact, broken my leg, probably. <laughs> but but it doesn't was- it just show you, isn't it proof to you the fact that I've seen that you've had a trauma energetically, and I can see what's going on in your body energetically, that that must be the cause of it, because otherwise, why would I have seen it? Well, yeah, I mean, and that's the kind of thing. And it's like that when you start looking into it and, and he said, oh, it's really quite common that when we, um, you know, you release uh, muscles and things that are related to something traumatic, you experience it physically. And I thought, well, that's really weird. And I sort of came home and started looking up, looking up. And then I think shortly afterwards, you put this on and it's like, I wasn't sure that I believed that 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 could happen but it, it seems that it obviously can and it seems that it's really common which is is do we have time damien to do a quick energy exercise and we could do yeah, it with sure. yeah that's a good idea okay so if if everyone's up for this you you know and obviously kirsty this is particularly for you but it's also going to help everyone else that if you just put both your feet on the floor and if you're comfortable Um, make yourself comfortable and if you are comfortable if you could close your eyes and then just allow yourself to feel your feet and we're going to go quickly with this and allow your attention your energy to be in your feet and then allow it to be in your lower legs your knees your thighs your pelvis your hips your sexual organs your intestines then all the way up your torso, including all of your organs in your torso, and obviously your higher intelligence mind knows how to do this. And then your energy, your attention goes into your shoulders, your chest, your heart, your arms, your hands, your neck, your throat, your face, your head, sides of your head, the top of your head, and into your head. And now your attention, your energy is in the whole of your body as a whole. You're no longer looking at parts of it. And it may feel warmer, it may feel more alive, it may feel more energetic, and obviously I'm going fast. This is the aliveness in your body. This is, this is the energy that you're made up of. And just allow some of that energy, less than 5%, so just naturally and easily, because it's already doing it going to the ground. Allow some energy that's already happening to naturally and easily come from the ground into your body. And as this new energy comes into your body, allow it to align you, allow it to connect you with the earth. So it's like being in nature, being surrounded by all that energy that's just getting on, doing its thing. It's not taking anything personal. It knows what it's doing. It knows where it's at. It's just relaxing. It's just being. And allow that energy to come into you and just work its way, you know, into your sacrum, into your pelvis, aligning the pelvis, you know, creating all, all, all the bones, bring them back to the blueprint, that how you were when you were born, how you are in the mind of I. And just connecting with your spine, aligning your spine, and just easing the muscles that's holding the tension, holding anything that's there. Then it goes into the neck and it's aligning the tension there, aligning the vertebrae, and it's aligning the shoulder girdles and it's relaxing all the muscles. And then it's going into the adrenal gland and the pituitary gland, the penile gland and the amygdala. And it's just relaxing all the glands in the brain and bringing them into equilibrium. And this is your real true energy. This is who you are. It knows your blueprint. It knows how to align you. And it knows how to do everything in perfect timing. So if things are released and you can go on with your life without pain, without being re-traumatized. And you can just allow that to settle. And you can keep... You know, you can keep some of your attention in the whole of your body as you open your eyes and come back to the core. So if that was good for you, raise your hand.
<laughs> okay, cool. Well, everyone I can see is raising their hand. So sorry about the quickness, but I'm glad it was, I'm glad you enjoyed it all. And something shifted, Kirsty. Can you feed it? This, that was weird. That's all I'm going to go with. Really okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love the speed of that one because it didn't give you any time to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was like, whoa, wait a minute. It was like, whoa, leg, yeah. whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> that was brilliant. I love that. Actually, something that occurred to me just, just um, prior to that was uh, when you were talking about Bruce Lipton and, and uh, the stress. And, and th this is, I always say that, you know, the principles for me is, is kind of a cornerstone of, the, of this whole picture. And, and there's so many other parts of this picture, you know, there's the, the, the the energy work there's you know what we're understanding about what consciousness actually even is or could be and you know oneness whatever um there's so many kind of facets that, that we just we're starting to kind of question and get curious about um but there's so many times in the last well what is it now eight years nine years now where things have happened where i where i previously would have reacted where I just now watch my thinking. It, it, it's a stressful thought and it kind of just goes whoop and, and, and off, you know, like the, like the clouds in the sky, taking the bad weather somewhere else. And I don't, I don't suffer the inflammation from that. I'm, I'm, I'm watching it, but I'm not involved with it. So it was just that, I don't know, I guess that, that kind of huge insight of, well, if, if everyone kind of could see that they don't have to believe their thinking in the moment, well, that, that would reduce stress levels quite dramatically across the world, <laughs> which in turn would it would reduce. Eradicate it. <laughs> I don't think it would ever eradicate it, but um, because, I, as I said, you know, I, there's times when I don't see it. You know, there's, there's times when I get tailgated and I really do believe that there's a son of a bitch up my backside. <laughs> and then Maybe I remember, there is. <laughs> but then I remember, <laughs> and I go, oh, I don't have to get involved with this. And I just pull into the slow lane and they, off they go. Um, but, you know, for, for, I think for, for moments, I think it would be difficult. I mean, you know, it, it, Sid lost it, you know, occasionally. And, you know, his wife would say, Earth calling Sid. Hello. What do you tell people? Oh, yeah. Thanks, Bob. Forgot. <laughs> But I think it would do. It would go a long way in our lifetime to reducing stress. So, um, uh, oh, I'm feeling really chilled out now. <laughs> <laughs> Next. Next. Um, I like this one. This was um, how? How can uh, this came from Jacqueline Wade? Um, she's put. Uh, what would you like uh, help with Fio from Fiona with regard to energy shifting? Attract more positivity and confidence. That's a that's an unusual, unusual question. And she's not here, so we can't ask her about it. But what are your thoughts on that? It's really funny because I don't believe positivity and negativity actually exists, and I explain why. If, if we're mind, if, if we're the pure life force and we're pure energy, then energy, like, like thoughts, like emotion, like everything in life, only takes on the meaning we give it. So if we're giving something a negative meaning, that's just in our thoughts. If you're feeling sad, you're feeling sad. There's a purpose to it because if there wasn't, you wouldn't feel it. Now there's a difference between a feeling and an emotion. And, and again, these are my, my beliefs and maybe Damien will agree with me, maybe he won't. But feelings of physical sensations. If I feel this cup, you know, I'm, I'm literally feeling the cup. It's not a thought, it's a, it's a biofeedback system into my body telling me I'm feeling something that's made from China, I guess, I have no idea. It was in the house when I got it. Um, so made of China, probably made in China too. Um, so that, that's a feeling that I'm holding a cup. That's important. Now I can have an emotion about that. And the emotion could be, oh, look, they might think I eat magnums and I'm not meant to eat magnums or, you know, and then I could tell myself what's the story about it. And then I'm going to have lots of emotion in my body. And I'm definitely creating the emotion through the thoughts that are going on in my head. 
but it's up to me what I do with those thoughts. You know, it's like Damien said, I can just let it pass in the sky and it doesn't matter. Or I can grab onto it and I can think about it more, make a story of it and make that story either negative or positive. It's in my meaning. So I hopefully that answers the question. And I wish she was here because I could ask her. And basically what I'm saying in a nutshell is that we create our own positivity and negativity with our thoughts and then our emotions that follow those thoughts mm -hmm. where we could just see it all as neutral and ground and relax and it'll all be okay. Mm -hmm. Now confidence, how do you be more confident? I think I've just read Jacqueline's energy. So I'm just going to say it anyway, do more of what you love. And I think that, that stands for everyone. Just do more of what you love and you'll suddenly find that you're more confident. And if you don't, write me an email and complain and I'll talk to you for free about it. <laughs> oh, do you know what came up in my mind then? Just, just kids, children. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they just, they're just, they're, they're so, I think they've even done CAT scans of, or, you know, the, the brain scans of, of uh, four-year-old children and the, they're basically in a meditative state when they play. They're so present in play. It's why children love to play. Um, and, you know, take that into an adult life. And this is, uh, yeah, anyone again who saw my, my conversation with Amir recently, are saying, you know, for me, there's three rules of life. You know, this is, these are my kind of three, three rules that if you stick to these ones, you'll, you'll, you'll kind of be okay. The first one is sleep, because sleep starts, it's the reset. You get good sleep. Your body resets, your mind resets, you start the day afresh. The second one is create. We're here to create whatever it is, whether it's love or something new or, or change for people or whatever. And the third one is have fun. And if we can do those three things, if we can get really good sleep, if we can create something new every day, and if we can have fun doing it, that, that to me is a good a life well lived. And that's what kids do. They sleep brilliantly. They wake up and they create games out of nothing and they have fun doing it and they're just present and in the moment and they're loving life um so yeah confidence well that just comes from yeah just doing what you enjoy doing and i think life's too short not to enjoy doing what you do having said that i could also say to people you you could actually enjoy what you're currently not enjoy doing now that's a little hack because <laughs> guess what what what's the thing that's telling you you're not enjoying doing it it's your thinking i'm not enjoying doing it well what if you did enjoy it you know, and again, that comes back to Wild Bill Cody again in the in the concentration camps, who just was so present and in the moment that he was just living in the present. He didn't, you know, that he saw horrors going on around him, and yet it didn't phase him. So, you know, we are capable of being, you know, when we are not in our own personal thinking, we are capable of being in that moment, in the present moment, and enjoying whatever it is we're doing. Um, and you know, as I say to some clients, it's like the, the problem is not is not your is not your thinking in the moment the problem is you're thinking about your thinking in the moment mm. yeah so you can be you can feel sad and you can okay be okay with being sad you can be upset and you can be okay with being upset and you can be happy and you can not be okay with being happy you know there's <laughs> <laughs> who's ever been to a conference with like the really happy guy in the corner you know it's like hi i want to make friends with everybody <laughs> so you know it, it's not the thinking that's the issue it's our thinking about the thinking and, and and guess where that comes from it's still coming from us or coming through us which is why you know i'm having a an understanding of the principles to me is really helpful because it's just showing me it's just this this cloud system that continuously happening it's this thought that's continuously going through me and i don't have to get involved with any of it good and bad because that's just a judgment which comes from your thinking in the moment too that's all it is you said it good and bad we're making it all up <laughs> <laughs> yep <laughs> Brilliant. I'm just okay. wondering if, does anyone have a last question? Because you've got five minutes. Is that true? We have five minutes? We have uh, four and a half minutes. Um, tick, 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 tick. Well, just to let you guys know that Fiona is, um, for anyone who didn't know, we're doing Cape Verde this year. We did it with Jack Pransky in January, but we're doing it with Fiona in January 2019. And Cape Verde is an amazing place. Has anyone been to Cape Verde? Any of you guys been to Cape Verde? 
Um, well, I hadn't been until January and we got there and it, it, there's so much incredible energy in the island. I mean, it's just an amazing place. And um, Danny and Nida, who, who run the, the venue where we're going, they, they, they surf, they, wind, you know, they, they do wind kite surfing, they go up the mountains and camp out without a tent. They just like, go to these places and they're going to take you to some amazing places and tap into the energy on the island as well. Um, they are going to love you, Fiona. I mean, seriously, <laughs> you need to have a session with Danny because he's just, he's a, such a, an amazing person. He's just so tapped in. Um, and so we're going to be in Cape Verde on January the 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th. Um, people are going out there for the whole week. Uh, we only do the mornings and the evenings, so we don't do the daytime. So if you want to sunbathe, that's what you do. You just go and chill on the beach. Um, and I, we put some more footage up from, from last, uh, this year's event. Um, and, uh, the early bird price is going up tomorrow night on Friday at midnight, just so you know, uh, it's currently three, nine, five. If you want to come and join us and you have to sort out your own flights and accommodation, but that's all on the page. I will put that on the replay. Um, any last questions for Fiona before we disappear? And, um, no. In that case, we will do lots of sleep, play, create, and have fun on the retreat for sure. Oh yes, and and loads of exercises like we've just done as well, but like a lot longer. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I really like that short, sharp one. It's like whoa, whoa, think, yeah, whoa, whoa. great stuff. Well, thank you everyone for joining us again on this second webinar, and uh, look at we might sneak another one in at some stage as well. <laughs> and it's I'm really glad that that there's at least three of you guys are working with Fiona already. So that's brilliant. Um, okay. Thanks everyone for taking part and, um, thank you, Fiona. You, you really are an inspiration and uh, I love you to bits and uh, I'm so yeah, glad I found you. you. <laughs> well, you found me. <laughs> <and the other. laughs> All right. Thank you everyone. Lots of right. love. Thank you Take so care. much. Bye everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.